Welcome to Parna Garden. It has been a while since I uploaded the last gardening video because I have been busy with work and travel. Now that I'm back, I would like to show you how to collect seeds from the vegetables grown in your home garden and save them to start plants for the next growing season. Also, we will take a quick tour of the garden up until frost hit this week and my recent harvest from the first week of December. This is a winter melon. You may have seen this variety of winter melon in my harvest video. I'm going to cut this winter melon open and collect the seeds before I could use it for cooking. You can also make winter melon juice and it is known to be beneficial for people suffering from acidity. This is how the inside of a winter melon looks like. It has many fairly large seeds. You can collect these seeds in a bowl, wash them and dry them under the sun and then finally store it in sealable plastic bags. I'm going to use a small portion of this winter melon for today's use and I'm going to collect the seeds from that smaller piece. The rest of the winter melon goes to the refrigerator and it can stay there for at least a week. As you can see here, the small portion of the winter melon itself has a lot more seeds than you would require for a small backyard garden. Here I'm going to harvest dried pods of yard long beans, also known as Asian long beans. These dry bean pods are very easy to work with just bare hands. As you can see here, when you split the bean pod open, the beans pop out and you can collect them to start the seedlings for the next growing season. They can also be used for cooking. This is a rich gourd. If you let it stay in the vine for long, it turns dry and brown like this. You can cut the large end of this rich gourd and shake it for all the seeds to come out easily. Clean the seeds of husk and save them to start your next year's rich gourd plants. This is a plant of green chilies. As I have not harvested all of the green chilies, they have ripened and turned red. These red chilies can be dried under the sun for a few days and then stored in airtight containers for future use in the kitchen or for starting new seedlings for the next growing season. This is a bitter gourd, also known as bitter melon. When it ripens, it turns into this beautiful orange color and the pod starts opening by itself. Inside this pod, you will see a lot of seeds covered in red pulp. You can take the seeds and throw it into water and squeeze the pulp out of them. The seeds inside are light brown in color as you can see here. You can dry these seeds for a day or two and then save them for next season. To collect seeds from this ripe shooting star eggplant, I'm going to throw it into this container and add water to it, then set aside for a few days so it becomes mushy and the seeds separate easily. Here are the separated and cleaned seeds that I'm going to strain now and dry them under the sun on top of a paper towel. After the seeds are dry, you can store them and use them next year for starting your eggplant seedlings. Here's a tip to speed up this process. If you make a couple of cuts in the eggplant before you immerse it in water, 
it becomes mushy faster and you can separate the seeds sooner. Let's collect some okra seeds. Here is my okra patch towards the end of the season with some okra parts that have gone to seed. Which means these okra parts have stayed on the plant until they became dry and brown. These parts are filled with lots of okra seeds. As you can see here, I'm trying to open it with, with one hand because I have the camera on the other, but you can see there are a lot of black round okra seeds inside each of these pods. Here is a close up view of the okra seeds that I collected. These are Shankapushpa flowers from my garden. They grow in vines. After the flowers drop, the plant produces pods filled with seeds. When the pods are brown, they are ready to be harvested. When you harvest the pods, sometimes they split open and you can see the seeds. Typically, each pod has six to seven seeds and they are very easy to open with just one hand. These are the seeds collected from the vegetables and flowers grown in my backyard garden in the year 2017. It's important to label the seeds that you collect and also mark the year in which you collect them. Because after a few years, the germination rate of the seeds may go down and you may not get the expected result after sowing the seed and waiting for a few weeks for it to emerge. Here I'm going to store all of these seed packets in a shoe box and set it aside for the next growing season. Now on to garden tour. First let's take a look at these tomato plants growing in containers. These were planted in spring and they have already produced a lot of tomatoes in early summer this year. Now, towards the end of fall and early winter, they are producing second round of tomatoes. And some of them are not going to be ready before the first frost in my area. These are indeterminate variety of tomato plants and they grow up until the first frost. As we experienced higher than usual temperature in early winter this year, the bell pepper plants have been producing a lot of peppers. You can see multiple plants of bell peppers here making baby peppers in early December. In addition to bell peppers, the green chili plant has been producing a lot of green chilies. Also, the poblano pepper is making peppers too. Here is an overripe bitter gourd that has split open on its own and its seeds are about to fall into the ground. Hyacinth bean plant has been putting out a lot of bean pods towards the end of fall and up until the first frost it is producing a lot of flowers and fresh bean pods. This plant has gone up on the fence and you can see at the top there are a lot of flowers and fresh beans. This garden bed had tomatoes and winter melon earlier this year. After their production, I have pulled these plants out. Here in this area, Lufa is still producing. Also, hyacinth beans are producing bean pods. These vegetables were harvested from my garden in the first week of December, just a few days before the temperature went below freezing and killed all the vegetable plants in my garden. On the night of December 7th, the temperature in my area went below freezing. It went down to minus 5 degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to 23 degrees Fahrenheit. Here is how my garden looked the next morning. Although I had covered these chilies and peppers with plastic sheeting, it did not save them from the cold. Thank you for stopping by and viewing this video of Parna Garden.
If you like this video and would like to get notified of future videos from Karna Garden, please hit the like and subscribe button below.